It's about patron saints. So it's St. Patrick's Day and different patron saints uh, in the UK. Vocabulary, uh, a flower, the daffodil, the flower that grows in spring, the yellow one. Also the vegetable, the leek, L-E-E-K. An animal, a porpoise, which is like a dolphin, but it's not a dolphin. Also, the difference between the country whales and the animal whales. But you'll hear the way I pronounce it. It's the same. SNP, the Scottish National Party. And there's just some names that you'll probably have to pick up as it comes along. Ready? Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A couple of weeks ago, I was mulling over a pint of Guinness in the pub with my friends. It was St. Patrick's, and I was asking myself, with many others I think, why are we here celebrating St. Patrick's? We're not Irish, we're not in Ireland, but yet everyone's here, dressed in green, talking about how wonderful Ireland is. So it got me thinking about my own country, the UK. And we have our own patron saints, and why do we not celebrate these? Or at least in the same way as St. Patrick's Day. I'll try not to bore you during my speech with intricate details about Wales, Scotland and England, whose patron saints are St. David, St. Andrew and St. George, respectively. Nor will I try to offend any of the devout atheists here who might be offended uh, with so much religious talk. But I do want to talk about why St. Patrick's is so important globally and give you more information about the other saints that we have in our countries. I'm sure that you all had a good party on St. Patrick's. We, we saw a parade, there were pipers, there was traditional music, there was sports such as football and the famous hurling. There was also dancing, but not the type I did at school. It was special Irish dancing, but it was quite fun to watch. In short, it was a celebration of culture, and, and that's always good to celebrate. We had, it was in Brussels, but we also have enormous St. Patrick's parades in the USA and Canada because you have a lot of expats, no pun intended. But then what of our patron saints, or mine anyway, what about St. David in Wales, St. Andrews in Scotland, or St. George in England? Let's have a look at St. David first, as, as that's my name, David. He is the patron saint of Wales, not to be confused, of course, with St. Brendan the Navigator, who is the patron saint of Wales. So just as long as that's clear, we'll continue. St. David was blue-blooded. He had his stock, well, he had family ties with King Arthur, people say. He was in a monastery, he then became a missionary, and he helped to convert the Celts in Ireland and France as well to Christianity. The details of his life are quite sketchy, but it's thought he lived during the 5th century, more or less. He was actually one of the first vegetarians, and that's why the symbol for St David is the leek, which uh, on the 1st of March in Wales is everywhere, along with the daffodil, which is also the flower of Wales. On a side note, I like St David the best because it's my name. And because when I travel from country to country, my name doesn't change very much. It's either David, David, or David. Except in Wales, when it's David. But more or less, it's quite easy to travel. People always understand what you're called. Heading further north, we'll go to Scotland, and we have St Andrew's Day, which is celebrated on the 30th of November every year. However, this was only a national holiday. It's only been a national holiday since the SNP's glorious rise to government, in 2007. The flag of St Andrew's is a blue flag with a white cross and it represents the way St Andrew was crucified in the shape of, of the cross. The legend is that St Andrew was buried at the city called St Andrew's in the north of Scotland, a city also famous for golf, Prince William and very high house prices, as you may or may not be aware. The story behind the flag of Scotland is apparently based on an arm, uh, a battle between the Scots and the Picts. The Picts were the tribe in the north of Scotland. And the Scots said that if they won the battle, 
they would devote their all their life and energy to St Andrew. And in the morning before the battle, the clouds formed a cross shape against the blue sky, which was the cross of St Andrew. I've also seen that too in Scotland. It's quite a common cloud formation. However, in Scotland, we often celebrate something called Burns Night. Robert Burns was a poet, and we celebrate his National Day on the 25th of January. So for me, that's always been Scotland's National Day. People wear kilts, we have poetry, we have the famous Ode to the Haggis, which is a very famous uh, poem, <coughs> which I will not be reciting tonight, unless you buy me a few drinks. Although, of course, England has its own very famous saint. We have St George, and like St jo- like Andrew, St George was also a martyr. St George, however, was a Roman soldier, and it was, in fact, Richard the Lionheart who brought back the emblem of St. George to the UK. St. George was uh, known for protecting the Christians, performing miracles, and general bravery and chivalry, as well as killing that famous dragon. However, is St. George really quintessentially English? If you look around, we see that St. George is the patron saint of many cities and towns, among, for example, Georgia, Bulgaria, Canada, Italy, Lebanon, Lithuania, Montenegro, Portugal, Russia, and Spain, just so you have an idea. There are many more, and I won't go into those in any more detail. So we have all these illustrious saints in our own countries, but yet we celebrate St. Patrick. So who was St. Patrick and what did he do? St. Patrick was born in the British Isles. He was enslaved by pirates. And during his six years with these pirates, he converted to Christianity. Then he became a missionary and finally a bishop. The celebration of St. Patrick's has a religious element and a cultural element. It's a holy day or a holiday of obligation. So people go to church and they're very religious. But it's also a celebration of general Irish culture, which is why perhaps the fusion has made it so popular as well as the Irish immigration all over the world. So I think that although St. Patrick's was, St. Patrick was a pretty good guy, we all have our own patron saint as well that we should, we should try to, to look to when we look for celebration. I'll give you a couple of, of the stranger saints <coughs> because they have uh, some quite funny associations. There's an Irish one, which is St. Fircra, if that's pronounced correctly. And he's the patron saint of venereal diseases, such as chlamydia, gonorrhea, etc. So they have a saint for that. There is St. Brendan, the navigator, who is the patron saint of whales and dolphins, although I'm not sure about porpoises, but general cetaceans. eh, cetaceans, sorry. And Belgium, of course, has St. Joseph, as I'm sure that you're all aware. In one way or another, this leads me to a kind of conclusion. There are many patron saints who are associated with many different things. I'll take this chance to tell you that I will not be with you in the bar tonight, I'm afraid, until a bit later on, because I have a prior engagement with St. Monica. And St. Monica, as I'm sure you all know, is the patron saint of alcoholics. So you can rest assured that I will pray for all of your souls, and I'll join you later. Thank you.